Hi guys, so welcome to my channel. It's Audrey, also known as Noble Strength. Hope everybody out there is doing well today. How are you, wherever you are? I hope you're doing fine. So, you know, I just wanna talk for a minute. Can we talk for a minute? This video was inspired by a fellow YouTuber. Her name is Abini, and you can check her out on Abini TV. Abini had a live going on the other night and she always has these fabulous live videos where she just talks about various topics. It could be about relationships. It could be about just life in general and things that we face in life, travel, exploring, you know, being reflective, that type of thing. And I just really enjoy those conversations. She's very thoughtful in her dialogue and what she has to say. And so she posed a question to me uh, during her live uh, within the dialogue of the comments that we were having. And she was like, you know, Audrey, you should think about doing a video sharing what molds and shapes your perspective on life. What keeps you so positive and optimistic about life? And I was like, you know, thank you, Abini. I will do that because I've never done anything like that on my channel. Everything is usually kind of somewhat uh, planned out and I just want this to be like a conversation with girlfriends. When Abini posed that question to me, she says, and I know that your faith is a big part of your life, but in addition to your faith, what are some other things that cause you to have that perspective on life and being so positive and, you know, pleasant in your, you know, views on life and how you project yourself. So, um, I thought about it and I have to go back to the very beginning and that is my childhood. And my mom told me that I was a very happy go lucky child and I loved being around people of all ages. She said, you loved hanging around the elderly people, you loved being around young people and it very easy going. And so that was one of the things that she shared with me that I guess it was just my temperament. And you know, we're all made with specific personalities and temperaments to serve a purpose in this world. If we were all the same, we would not be able to accomplish so many of the great things that we accomplish in life. And I say all of that to say that I didn't always have the faith that I have. So I'm coming at you from a standpoint of how it was before having an actual personal relationship with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which we'll get to later because that plays a huge part in why I am the way that I am. But I think it really goes back to how we're shaped and molded, how each one of us is individually created with our different temperaments. And I am that type of person that has an aversion for negativity. I never liked confrontation growing up. I never liked hearing criticism. And I know there is constructive criticism, but I had to grow in developing and understanding the difference between constructive criticism and just flat out criticism. I'm a very, very sensitive, highly sensitive individual. And I think that plays a part in me being conscientious about other people's feelings and what I say and how I say it. And I think that plays a big part in what, you know, I bring to me and what I draw to me energy wise. And so um, all of that plays a big role in it. And then I think too, my upbringing, I grew up in a home where I had both my parents and I know I did not come from the perfect family. We had our dysfunction just like any other family. But I knew that I had two parents, they were, they were in the home, they stayed together, and I knew that they loved me. And so, you know, love can conquer a multitude of things, you know, love prevails, love conquers all. And just knowing that I had two parents that loved me made me feel secure. I had a lot of extended family, aunts and uncles around me that loved me and cared for me. And I knew that and I felt that. And so I think that helped in my developing a really positive mindset on life and not being jaded because I didn't have a lot of traumatic things happen to me in my childhood. To be honest with you, I didn't really have any traumatic things happen to me in my childhood. And I say not a lot because when I got to middle school, I did have some bullying to take place and that was pretty traumatic. But I mean, from my nucleus, my family itself, the part that really shapes and molds an individual, 
I came from a really, you know, blessed life in that sense. Uh, so that, of course, helps your outlook on life and how positive you are about life in general. Another thing is as I got older, then I got more into the word and studying the Bible as a young teenager. And that really developed and shaped and molded my perspective on life like really focusing on how to treat other individuals, treating them in a way that I would want to be treated, etc. So it wasn't until after like my 20s that I really like in well into my 30s that I really developed a personal relationship with God and he became more real to me on a personal level and I thought of him as a person which he is because Christ came down in human form uh, and dwelt among men. And so he has emotions and feelings and all of these things. And when, you know, I ask him into my heart, that's when I really began to see a change in me because we all have our faults and our flaws, things that we want to change about ourselves. And, you know, when I accepted Christ, he helped me to not condemn myself for the flaws that I had, but help me to give me shine the light on how I needed to change the things that I needed to change in order to become the person that I wanted to become. And I think I wanted to become a person that other people would want to be around. But then as I got older and more mature, I wanted to be a person that I wanted to be around. Do I like myself? Can I like myself? And then ultimately it went above that and is, will God like me? Will, can I please God? And you know, God is going to love us because his love is unconditional, but to have him like you, you know what I mean? Just, uh, so that's how it kind of grew into my perspective. And like I said, I've always been just an optimistic person, someone who tries to see the good in other people, someone who believes that you know there's hope for every individual no matter how ugly characteristically they may be uh, because I don't believe anybody's ugly physically uh, I believe that we have different levels of attractiveness based on our own perceptions but I think we all are beautiful or you know we're created in the image of God and there is beauty in that so um yeah, I always try to find the good. Find that as you get older, if you have a high standard, if you try to find the good in things, it rubs people the wrong way sometimes or it makes them uncomfortable because we live in a world that thrives on negativity that when someone who's truly optimistic, you're like, what's wrong with that person? Why are they smiling so much? And I found that I actually a lot of times have adults like to say, um, Oh, that's, you know, Audrey's so naive. Just because I might have a positive outlook on life or be optimistic doesn't mean I'm naive. Maybe I was naive at some point in my walk, you know, of being optimistic. But as I got older, I still continue to be optimistic and positive without being naive, you know? And that came with the knowledge of the word of God and just life experiences. But also, um, I believe that adults, if they see an attribute in someone that they wish they had, they poke at it or they make fun at it. And I found that to be so in my adult life. Like I was called Pollyanna a lot um, on the job, Little Miss Sunshine. And they did it in a way where it could be deemed as, you know, oh, they're just shining the light on a good character trait. But at the same time, it was kind of like them highlighting something that was unusual to them or that stood out, you know, to them because it was odd. But we do live in a world where people like to criticize. They like to talk about all the things that are not right. They like to complain. And that goes back, you know, long before, you know, I ever came into this world into existence. There's nothing new under the sun. People been griping and complaining since the beginning. So we, by nature, tend to focus on the negative. But I think that my temperament, the way that I was designed by God, he just designed me in a way that I would have the character trait to 
be less likely to be that way. Like I say, to have an aversion for negativity. And I think he made me that way so that I could be an encourager to other people within the body of Christ ultimately. And um, I've come to embrace that as I've gotten older and come to actually pray about, you know, developing that gift because I really believe it is a gift. And so I go to my father for that because he is so awesome and great. And he's like my biggest encourager. He is the most encouraging, you know, being there is. And if you get into the word, you will see how encouraging he is. So I draw encouragement from that because I'm not always, you know, happy, go lucky. I have days when I'm down and if you, you might want to say depressed, but I don't stay there. But I do get down like anybody else. I do get discouraged, but I don't stay there and I don't want to stay there. I quickly want to you know, get in the word, pray, talk to a friend. And that's another thing. I stay positive by communicating and getting things out. I don't like to bottle things out. I've never been that way. I'm an expressive person. I like to get it out. And um, so now that I've kind of given you an idea on why I am the way that I am, I want to talk about some more practical things that help me to be positive. So I do things that I enjoy and love. And art is one of those, writing poetry, keeping journals, singing, uh, just any involvement with music, listening to music, playing on the piano, the keyboard, or just being creative. That's all I can say. And so I do do that. I love to travel. So whenever I have an opportunity to travel, whether it's just a town 30 miles away or 40 miles away, I like to take trips. I like to explore. That brings me joy. I like meeting new people and talking to strangers because I find little treasures in the conversations that you have with people that you meet for the first time. And uh, let's see what else. I also like to take time to be you know, alone. I really don't mind being alone. Some people do not like being alone. They fear that, but we need that alone time. I promise you that if you just set aside time to be alone for 30 minutes out of the day where you get away from everybody and just be to yourself, be with God, there is peace in that. And it's a way of like bringing yourself balance into your life because, you know, we're overly saturated with you know sensory things that it can like drain you and take a lot from you so find time to get away and be alone and uh, just be quiet another thing that helps me to be positive is to surround myself with positive individuals and people that are negative i really try to avoid those individuals but you can always um change the conversation or you know try to flip it into a more positive way or limit the amount of time that you spend in the presence of that person just do what you need to do to get the job done and then move on so i do try to limit myself uh, with being around negative negativity and another thing that i do is i like to read and i like to feed my mind with things that are positive and i've read quite a few books that were Christian-based help books. And I love books like that. Books that are nonfiction, that are uplifting, and that are healing and encouraging. And one of the books that I read a long time ago was a book by Tim LaHaye. It was called Why I Act the Way That I Do. And it really helps you to decipher your character traits. And it's divided up into you know categories like the sanguine, the melancholy, the caloric, the phlegmatic and where you fall within that spectrum. And it really gave me, a, and it's, you know, from a Christian standpoint, based on biblical uh, standards. So it really gave me a perspective of who I was and my personality. So I could embrace what I thought were weaknesses. I could now embrace them as strengths, you know, within the body of Christ and how I could work within the body of Christ with my characteristics. So that book, I think, was very helpful in shaping me and making me a more positive person because it gave me a better understanding of my personality. And in case you're curious and in case you've read that book, I will leave an insert of the book cover so you can see it and try to leave a link below. But you take a little test. You have people that are close to you 
you know, take a little quiz on you and then you use that information to kind of decide what are your dominant traits or characteristics. And mine fell to be a sanguine, which is a kind of happy, uh, optimistic person and a melancholy person, person who feels a lot, who's very emotional, who um, can be prone to depression. But like I say, in my case, uh, not. And I know King David kind of fell in that category of having a, a melancholy person side to his personality um but we just feel and, and it kind of gives you direction on like professions that you might be good at and it said that i would be good at teaching <laughs> and who knew and also like in the theater things like that so very interesting book you might want to check it out but don't let that guide your life of course uh, another book that I read that I really enjoyed that helped me a lot in the beginning of my adulthood was um, don't sweat the small stuff and that was a really good book and I'll leave that also on the screen so you can see the book cover and in the link below but I was one of those people that I even though I'm optimistic I'm very self-critical which is so odd because I can see the best in others and focus on their strengths but when it comes to me and I think we all are like that in a lot of ways I was very critical and this book helped me to not be so critical of myself, though I still have times when I am, but that book was very good about just learning to let things go so that you can move forward in life because focusing on these little things can get you bogged down and, you know, kind of at a standstill. So uh, reading and let's see. So I talked about doing the things that you love traveling, you know, doing art, whatever it may be, cooking, if that's your thing, surrounding yourself with positive people and feeding your mind with things that are positive. And I do, in contrast to that, avoid things that are going to bring me down or be negative. So I'm not one of those people that like watching crime shows, like what's that show? Uh, <laughs> Fatal attraction, uh-uh, none of that stuff because it just depresses me. It has me focusing on the negativity that's in the world. We already know the world is full of negativity and hate and deceit and deception. But why would I want to focus on that? Especially when God commands me to think on things that are true and pure and noble and just and praiseworthy. So I want to focus on those things not stick my head in the sand and act like they don't exist, you know, the horrible things in the world, but also don't inundate myself with that to the point where I am depressed and bogged down and I can't move forward, you know, in life. So I try to avoid things that are negative. I don't watch a lot of news, you know, know what's going on in the world, the big headliner things, but I don't try to like inundate myself with that. Like I said, I try to focus on the things that make me happy and bring me joy and bring me peace. And for me, that is the word of God and those other things that I mentioned. Uh, but I cannot stress enough, you know, how much, you know, God has changed my life and being in his word has changed my life as a person. And so I just give him all honor and glory. And, you know, love is the biggest thing. If we can just focus on love because love you know, bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So I am very optimistic about my future because of my beliefs. I know that there's a God because he's real to me. He made himself known to me so I can stand on his word and I have hope for a brighter tomorrow. And even with all the chaos in the world, I know who's in control. And so that, you know, really settles me and brings me a lot of joy and peace. So I hope this video was insightful. I hope it helped you to got, uh, get to know me, uh, your fellow content creator, a little bit better for those of you who do watch my channel and tune in. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. I have thoroughly enjoyed reading your comments and Whatever you may be going through out there, no matter what it is, just know that there is hope. Today is today. Tomorrow is a new day and you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. It may bring something bigger and better and brighter your way, but just hold on. Don't, you know, lose hope. Just remain steadfast, you know, in believing that there, the best is yet to come. And also, like I said, just know that you're loved 
God loves you. I love you. I'm praying for everyone out there because we all need a savior. And you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. Take care. And oh, one more thing I almost forgot. Another thing that, you know, helps me to be optimistic too is, you know, taking care of myself and trying to take care of myself, trying to eat right, trying to get a little bit of exercise in, even if I'm not consistent, trying to do those things, it helps with my mental clarity. And uh, so, yeah, eating right, you know, being healthy in a physical sense is going to help your mind as well. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And remember to always be a good steward of all that God has given you because he truly loves us so much. And I will see you next time. Bye.